<laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. So I realized that I think that myself and many others included, we have this tendency to take a look back at movies, uh, especially rom-coms with the lens of not only whatever year we're in, so 2023, but also with the lens of reality. And I realized and came to this conclusion that I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna take a look back at certain rom-com films. And if you have any suggestions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below so that I can watch them if I haven't already seen them and we can discuss them. The reason I don't wanna do that anymore is because A, Romance intrinsically in reality sucks. So in movies, it wouldn't be romantic if we met like we do in real life. Like if they made a movie where two people swiped on each other and then continued to have some like weird, awkward dates until they eventually decided that they weren't in a situationship and they're like together without any hijinks, without any like big romantic sweeping gestures. Like nobody would watch that because it's not a good time. The point of a rom-com is for us to escape. As such, therefore, and forth with today, I'm gonna be looking at Notting Hill, which is one of my favorites uh, because it's one of the few movies that I do like Julia Roberts in. And please excuse all the blinking because this light is so, so bright and I'm so, so autistic. So it hurts. But one day I'm gonna figure out a lighting situation that doesn't ruin my life. Um, and when I do that, listen, it's over for you hoes. Anyway, we're gonna take a look back at Notting Hill. It's one of the few movies that I like Julia Roberts in. I have like a thing against her and it's probably not even her fault that she was in Aaron Brockovich, but that movie had the white girlies in the 90s just like in a chokehold and I hated it. The, they're called boobs, Ed. Just ugh, every time, ugh, ugh, every time. Anyways, Notting Hill. Now, because it's hard for me to just like talk right now. I'm going to get ready. Also, I am going to game stream on Twitch. If you're not following me on Twitch, you can follow me here. All right. So I like to shake things. It makes me feel so good shaking things. Oh, I feel like such a winner. Now, just to get started, Notting Hill was a movie from 1999, which stars, as I said previously, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant, the floppy haired king. Listen, I don't think y'all understand like what Hugh Grant did to us back then, but the floppy hair, the kind of like stuttering, like uh, 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 I just, uh, we, we couldn't, we couldn't resist. He was like the epitome of charming and we just like could not get enough of him. Like there was just something magical about Hugh Grant. And you know what, there still is. I love me some Hugh Grant, I always will. I think that there, like he is an actor that I think currently, if he were to roll up on me and be like, oh, excuse me, Udra, and I'd be like, ha, ah! and that would be the end. Anyways. Um. <laughs> Also, just a quick note that Rizzi fans, I fans, I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name correctly, and I don't live where he lives, so don't, I don't come from where he comes from, so don't start on that, okay? Thank you. Also, once again, this is not my job. This is a hobby. No, I'm not gonna look it up. Squirm. Anyways, he does a very good comedic turn in this film. So how this movie begins is we're seeing like all these beautiful pictures of, you know, Julia Roberts being a star. And one of the reasons that this is like such a, uh, words, one of the reasons that people like this movie so much, myself included, is because like this is the, one of the ultimate films in what if a celebrity like falls in love with you. And I feel like everybody has that scenario in their mind. I just, I don't think that there's a person alive who doesn't have like some kind of celebrity crush that you have multiple times worked out what, like the perfect scenario in which the two of you would like meet cute. Listen, don't, I'm dropping things. Don't pretend it's just me because it's not just me. You're in on this too. All right, so Hugh Grant plays a travel bookstore owner, which is such a weird thing, which again, this is obviously why this is, <laughs> why that this is like a, a romance, a 
nonsensical romance in a lot of ways, but that's the point, right? The point is for us to escape and get lost in this beautiful, magical world. So he is a travel bookstore owner. He is divorced and he shares uh, a flat with Spike, who's played by Reese. And Spike is just, you know, chaotic energy. And I really think that if Spike was your favorite character at the time, you've recently been or have been diagnosed as neurodivergent. Come on, listen, the chaos. So like he just pure chaos in that man, hilarious. Anyway, uh, Julia Roberts plays Anna Scott, a very famous Hollywood actress. And I like this movie too because it is rooted in some form of reality so you can like imagine that this actually could happen. And the, here's the thing, it does. Whenever people in Hollywood actually get together with like a normie like me, it's usually like super normie. Didn't Matt Damon marry up? <laughs> So sorry, I can't say it any other way. Listen, it's not my fault that I watched Team America World Police and now I can't say it anywhere. But didn't he marry like a waitress? A server? See what I'm saying? Life is funny that way. Anyways, Anna Scott, for reasons, goes into his shop and she buys a book. And he's just sitting there like, holy smokes is that and she's like mm-hmm but she buys the book and she leaves and and Hugh Grant ends up running into her and like spilling shit on her because of course he does because it's not a me cue if you don't spill something on your object of affection so anyways he <laughs> runs into her and he's like hey you know come to my house and you can get cleaned up like not in a creepy way but like I'm super sorry um, but nevertheless there we go there they're yours if you want them You always say no to everything. No. And she's like, okay. And then when she's leaving, she kind of, you know, gives a little, gives a little smooch. And old boy is like, uh -huh. and we're all just like, uh -huh, aghast. You know what I mean? Here she is, the gorgeous, the beautiful Anna Scott, kissing Hugh Grant. Listen, I know his name's not Hugh Grant. It's Will in the movie, which, of course, it is. Because virtually every British man in a movie, their name is Will. Like, let's let's be real about that. Their name is always Will. They're like, what's a good name for a British man, for an Englishman? Will, William. They're all named William and Bill. Let's be real about this. Anyway, Billiam. So Anna ends up inviting him to meet her at, his, at her hotel. She's like, hey man that I just kissed randomly and impulsively. You wanna come to the Ritz and like chillax with me? And he's like, sure, I will I will do such a thing, you know? And he goes, and it, obviously he doesn't do it exactly like that because he's British, so he has to be very British about it. But the thing that's funny is when he gets there, right? <laughs> He's mistaken for like just a part of the press. So he's just like, oh, I work for Horse and Hound magazine, which just like every time, like that's one of the funniest parts of the movie to me is like Horse and Hound. Like he couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> I can't breathe. He's just like, uh, um, Horse and Hound. <laughs> Listen, my Hugh Grant is getting better by the minute and I haven't watched this movie yet today. Like I wanted to, Listen, I like to try to do as much stuff off of memory as possible, which is a ridiculous endeavor considering I have ADHD. But I do it anyway because I try to keep my mind fresh and sharp because I'm afraid that I'm gonna get dementia. And we don't need to talk about this right now because right now we're talking about Notting Hill. Thank you. Anna ends up asking to be his date at his sister's birthday party. Pretty, it's my sister's birthday. Shit, we're meant to be having dinner. Okay, that's fine. No, I'm sure I can get out of it. No, I mean, if it's fine with you all be your date. And, you know, she, he's like, you wanna... You, you'll be my date to my little sister's birthday party. Go to my house. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like... Okay. Anna comes over to his house and meets his sister who is in a wheelchair, which listen, honestly, I really like this um, because I feel like this is, again, my opinion, I don't know because I don't watch every movie known to man, although I'm getting close to it sometimes, it feels like it. Um, I feel like this is one of the first times in a film that they had someone 
who was disabled and didn't have them be like the funny friend or the sad sack because that's what they do a lot in movies is they will consistently or in horror they get murdered pretty early so you know <laughs> welcome to the black club handicappers anyways um <laughs> that's as close as she'll get <laughs> getting murdered first in the film anyways um I hope that wasn't offensive, but I'm just trying to be an equal opportunity hater. We we die first, you die first too. It's like, we if we die first, you die second. You know what I mean? Because they're like, ugh, we're disgusted by both of you. Anyways, they're like, blacks, wheelchairs, let them get murdered. Anyways, so I feel like this is one of the first times that I got a representation of someone who was in a wheel wheelchair that wasn't being seen as like sad and embarrassing. She has a beautiful relationship with her husband who loves her dearly and would do anything for her. And you can clearly see that in this film, we're not trying to make in any way, even though she's not like the main character, even though she's kind of on the side, we're not trying to make anyone feel bad or sorry for her. She's just like a regular ass person. And this is when they did this back in the day, you know? Now, if this movie were made today, there would be like an entire, uh, and this is why, this is why I want to do this because I think that today in, I don't want to call it woke because that's a dog whistle and like the way that you know, racists have changed that is annoying. But today, if they made the movie today, the entire focus would be on her constantly talking about like being in a wheelchair instead of being an actual person. So I really like that that was like the whole thing. And then you have like the, um, is that his sister? I feel like, is that Will's sister or is it the quirky girl? I think the quirky girl is his sister. I can never remember, listen. Anyways, the point is that there's someone there <laughs> I think she's like a really close friend. I can't remember because I do believe that Will's actual sister is the quirky blonde girl who keeps trying to find a husband. That's probably it. And then his best friend is there for the birthday as well. And his wife is the one in a wheelchair. Editing me will find out if I am correct in these assessments and we're just gonna move right on. So, she, you know, Anna ends up having a very, very nice time at this party and she just like, she leaves and everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe we just had dinner with Anna Scott, which I feel you, babe. I'm right there. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Love your work. Bye, Bye. Good night. <laughs> but Anna's leaving. They go on a little walkity walk. They being her and Will, and they kiss in the park, and it's so freaking cute. And you're like, oh my god, the romance is coming true. The two beautifuls. They're gonna be together. We belong together. Don't look to me to sing, cause I'm terrible at it sometimes, but not all the time. But for that, bad. So the next day, Anna and Will go to a restaurant and they overhear like some men at a table kind of talking about her. And at first they're praising her, but then they really kind of talk really crappy about her. It's very upsetting. And I do feel like in some ways I can relate to this Maybe not for myself because nobody on anything talks about me, so like, <laughs> go me. But I can relate to it on seeing on forums people talk about like my friends, as if like, you know, my YouTube friends, and they're also my real friends, but I'm just clarifying. Uh, and talking about them as if they're not human beings. And so it's very upsetting, and so she does end up confronting them and just going over and like, kind of embarrassing them. <laughs> Hi. <gasps> oh my God. No, I'm sure you didn't mean any harm. I'm sure it was just friendly banter. I'm sure you guys have dicks the size of peanuts. Enjoy your dinner. The tuna's really good. And I feel like sometimes if we could do that online, that that would be amazing, but we can't because people feel so much safer online. Anyways, let's yeah. move forward. Anna ends up inviting Will up to her hotel room, but he gets up there and guess who's there? That's right her movie star man. And Will is just like, you know what? I cannot compete or compare with a Hollywood beau. It's a... Uh... And she's like, and I feel like the worst thing is like where he's like, I came to surprise you, aren't you surprised? And she's like, yes. So tell me, tell me, tell me. Good surprise or nasty surprise? 
And I'm like, girl, first of all, this man is mid, okay? Mid. You're gonna like leave an Englishman for, anyways, listen. Who am I to judge her? Only the movie watcher. So, anyways. a heartbroken Will, after having spent this lovely time with, you know, a beautiful star. And, you know, he's very much just like, I really shouldn't have expected this to last any way. And it's like, baby, you should always be reaching for the stars. Always. You know what I mean? Like, always go for your goals and reach for what you think that you deserve. You know what I mean? Even if you don't necessarily deserve it, you should try. You know what I'm saying? You can't just sit there like a little baby. But his family, seeing that he's heartbroken, then begins this whole... A uh, thing of like trying to get him set up on a bunch of different dates, but none of them compare Because of course not he was like really falling for Anna because like Anna the person not Anna the celebrity and she Knows that silly woman. She knows that like he actually likes her Anna not Anna the celebrity but Anna and so of course one day after I believe some photos of her have leaked is the situation. She just shows up on his doorstep, just like distraught and like, can I come in? And of course he lets her in. Of course he does. He's like, come on, come on in the house. Um, <laughs> she ends up apologizing about her stupid Hollywood boyfriend coming and is like, you know, our relationship is actually over and I'm sorry that I did that. And he's like, yeah, it's cool, girl, because I am in love with you. And so they end up like having this cute little like at home camp date and they like sleep together and where she even discusses how men in general want Anna the celebrity, Anna the star, Anna like not her. She just, she ends up talking about that. She's like, yeah, these men, you know, they want this one thing, but then they wake up and it's just me. You feel that way? You are lovelier this morning than you have ever been. But here's the thing, Reese is there. I, I don't know his movie character name. because of course I don't, but Reese I fans, listen, I'm gonna keep saying his name wrong because I just want people to choke on it, like have a good time. <laughs> I'm, I'm that asshole and I can't help being myself. Anyways, like I hope it's like disturbing if I'm saying it wrong and like you're just like <laughs> and just like, why don't you research it? And I'm like, cause I don't want to. Anyways, but he is there. And he's realizing like, oh, <laughs> uh. and here's the thing that's also funny about Spike is like he, Spike is Reese, Reese fans, I fans. Anyways, a fall. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. He, for reasons, he's often just like in underwear. Like we don't know why he is the way he is. He's, he just is that way. You don't know nothing, but she's just split up from her boyfriend. That's right, Jeanette. Isn't this perhaps a nice opportunity to They're like having a nice time and he's like, listen, I'm gonna um, pop out and get something. I don't know what he decides that he's gonna pop out to get, but he is gonna pop out to get something. As such, therefore, and forthwith, we are all excited. We're like, yay, look at them. They finally got together. Y'all, this is where it all goes down. When it all comes down. Listen, I can't sing. Not this early in the morning. He goes to open the door and there's just like paparazzi friggin' galore out there. Just like, Papa, paparazzi. And he's like, girl, don't open the door. And she's like, what? What are you hiding from me? He's like, I wouldn't. And she opens the door. There she is standing in Will's t-shirt in his little house, you know? And she has a friggin' meltdown. And it's mean, mean-spirited. You know, and as the viewer, I'm just like, girl, you don't need to be talking to him like that because he did you, first of all, he did you a favor and you over here acting up, just acting the fuck up. Like, girl, if you don't get, you, mm, mm, if you don't calm down, cause he's like the only person who gives, you you saw the real him. Ends up, like she leaves and she blames him for this, obviously, because she don't have any sense to realize that like, maybe it wasn't him, girl. Anyways. Newspapers last forever. I'll regret this forever. 
So the point is she angrily leaves and Will is left feeling like nothing. And I would too, if somebody said the kind of shit that she said to me, like, I'd just be like, girl, damn, you didn't have to like crush my feelings like that. Like it was unnecessary for you to like hurt me like that. I just don't know why you had to be like, why you had to be like that. Why you gotta act like that. Oh, and let me just tell y'all the way that Spike shows up at the door, like trying to like, because at the time, I think Reese is a fairly, um, what is the word that we use for men that are thin? Like, it's like lanky? Lanky. Um, I think we can use that for anyone, actually, because I'm quite lanky. Yeah. Anyways, he's over there, like, uh, <laughs> flexing and stuff in his weird underwear, and then he checks his bulge. I forgot to do that, but that is actually quite funny to me. Like, he checks his bulge to make sure it looked, it looks good. <laughs> And we're like, Will is just absolutely miserable now because he has been with and like love, he's been too close to the sun. Do you know what I mean? Anna is wonderful and she's beautiful and interesting. And he's just like here, just like, girl, I don't know how I can love you any friggin' more. Like I love you with every ounce of my being, like genuinely love you and I feel like, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, you just won't believe that I love you. And so I think I'm just gonna sit here and be miserable. And he is, he is a miserable, sad sap. And like, I absolutely love the time-lapse walks that he does in this movie where he's just like walking and all these seasons begin to pass. And he's like, just as he's walking, you see it. Also, I really love the score in this movie. It's one of the few times where I'm just like, yes, a score is just like right the hell on because a lot of times it doesn't exactly match or it's too kooky or it's too sad, like whatever it is. Like, I just don't like it. This is really just like a lot, but who cares? Anyways, he ends up finding out that Anna is back in town. She's filming like a, what is it? A film based on Henry James, which is something that they like, um, bonded over they're like oh my god <laughs> yeah and not exactly like that but like give me a break i'm tired and so he visits the set and she like lets him in and um he's just like sitting there and somebody brings him over the headset y'all this is the part this is the this is the thing that broke me as a human because he's sitting there with the headset on and <sighs> this scene is always the one that makes me just be like hot diggity feeling like the hot flush of shame on my face while this happens, while this takes place, because, because, because I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know exactly, like, I've, I've been there. I've been there, Will, where somebody just, you can hear him and she's just like so dismissive and mean about him being there. Like, I don't even know why he's here. And he just gets up and he leaves because he hears that shit. And he's just like, I didn't know I was embarrassing. I didn't know you didn't want me here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the hell out. Cause like, I don't want to make this any, any worse than it already is. Like, y'all, my heart broke at this. Like it was so mean. And uh, why did you have to act like that? It was unnecessary. You should have been not. Anyways, I'm going to stop high squeaks because First of all, I know that that's irritating, but second, <sighs> it's a movie and it's gonna have a happy ending. You know that, I know that, we've seen the movie. Anyway. So anyway, she ends up showing up at the bookshop and she's just like, listen, I <laughs> am a famous actress and as such, I have to be very careful with who I tell people things to. And I probably, you know, could do a better job of that whole thing. But like, I need you to understand that, first of all, I really, really like you, fam. Like, you are fantastic, and I just like it if we could, you know, start over. I'd like that a lot. And of course, she delivers the now infamous, I'm just a girl. I'm also just a girl. Standing in front of a boy. Asking him to love her. Listen, every time, listen, every time, 
That is honestly one of my go-tos. Like when I would date, because like now I don't date at all. Um, it's not because I'm ace. It's because I am uh, undateable. It's like it's a don't don't and please don't do the thing. Uh, like I've talked about this on on TikTok, but don't do the thing where you're like no like no I am undateable and I am perfectly okay with that. Like I am fine. I have a rich life. It is beautiful. I don't need anybody to like cape for me. It's fine. So. I know my capabilities and dating maybe isn't one of them. So anyway, he says no because he's had enough. He's had enough of this back and forth bullshit. He's like, girl, every time you come to town, my life is wrecked. Okay. I love you. <laughs> and then you hurt my feelings like exponentially, bitch, like crush me, crush my spirit, crush my soul. And so he tells his friends and family, he's like, they're like, so what happened? He's like, I told her no, it was the right thing to do, right? And they're like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause you know, supportive friends and family will support whatever it is that you want to do, babes. You know what I mean? My friends and family will support most of what I want to do fiercely, fiercely, okay? Like my bestest friends, like M, Teresa, Jen, very like all of my really good friends there's t out there support me james like if i tell them like i'm doing a i'm doing a thing they're gonna be like okay we support you and i'm gonna be like thank you i don't know why this isn't getting wet because i feel like i'm spraying it directly get wet <laughs> then he's like i <laughs> he's like yeah it was the right decision and he's just sitting there and everybody's sitting there and he's just like oh sort of dog i've made the wrong decision haven't i But anyway, Spike, as always, you know, king of making things weird and interesting. And also, after having discovered that he is, <laughs> he is um, Will's little sister's, or sister's, I don't know if she's little sister, but Will's sister's pick for fiance, which is just like the cutest scene ever. Like that, um, again, if you are... <laughs> If that romance, that little side romance, uh, was your favorite at the end, you are neurodivergent. I guarantee you, because that's some shit we would do. We'd be like, I have picked who I'm gonna be with, and it's you. Cause Spike is the obvious pick for us, right? Like he's a little wild, a little quirky. He's gonna do some weird shit, but we're fine with that because we're gonna be doing weird shit. So, anyways. <laughs> They end up going on the only really like, to me, my opinion, madcap situation that happens in this movie is this one. And I love it. I, listen, I love the airport chase scenes, like the I'm chasing my love down scenes in movies because there is, there is nothing, there is nothing, literally nothing more romantic to me than that. Like, could you imagine someone chasing you down? Like, not in a creepy way, not like some stranger, but like someone you want to be with. Let me make sure that I say that right, because <laughs> I have been um, pursued by those I'm no longer interested in. That is awkward for them, actually, not me, them. Anyway, so you see him like trying to get to the, the like I call it airport chase scenes, even though they're not going to an airport. So anyways, but that's, it's the same concept. Anyways, he races over to the Savoy Hotel where he thinks that everything's over, but it's not. There's a press conference going on where Anna is asking questions, okay? So anyway, a reporter is like, hey, so what happened to old boy? And she's like, oh, <laughs> we are just friends, you know, just friends. And sorry, I'm not centered never centered anyway she's just like we're just friends literally no one can draw a fucking perfect wing the way I do fucking a that looks like a stamped on wing bitch and I made that with my own hand listen just call me the best anyways to my face please thank you anyways back into <laughs> Notting Hill. I just got so stoked on this. I was like, bitch, oh, I'm so sad that Marc Jacobs beauty went out. Cause these liners, all of the liners were like fucking everything to me. But then here comes the most romantic moment. Will pushes through and he's like horse and hound. Cause like they were only supposed to be allowing like, I think one more question. And he's like, oh, it's me from horse and hound. And he starts asking questions and then she realizes it's him. But wait, before we get there, hold on. 
One of the reporters even asked, like, Anna, how much longer are you staying in the UK then? And she's like, I'm leaving at the end of the week or something like that. I don't remember when she says she's leaving, but she has an end date of like when she's gonna leave, right? And so then Will scooches forward from How Horse and Hound magazine. This Scott, are there any circumstances in which uh, the two of you might be more than just good friends? and just basically supplicated himself because he was like, I, you know, made a decision, not I, but he made a decision and like da 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 da. And she was like, I might be amenable to, the, you know, these changes, boo. And it's getting cuter. And, um, you know, she's like smiling and she's happy and he's really smiling and the reporters are realizing like, oh my God, it's fucking Will Thacker. You know what I mean? They're like, it's fucking Will. Now he's a celebrity of his own. And uh, as they begin to realize this, the reporter, like, she's like so happy and she's smiling from ear to ear like the famous Julia Roberts giant horse grin. I say that with literally all like positivity because not everybody can have a giant horse grin. Some people have like that weird Kira Knightley like small mouth smile and like, it's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying like, they're all different. You know, we all smile like different animals. I smile like a Cheshire cat because I've always got secrets. Anyways, uh, and then like you see everybody realizing what's happening. They're like, oh my God, it's Will. And we're like, oh my God, it's Will. The glory, the beauty. And guess what? She then, Julia Roberts, now Anna Thacker, comes in and she's like, listen, ask me again to the reporter who was like asking her how long she was going to stay in, in London. And he, and he was like, oh, well, Anna, how long are you going to stay in London? She looks at Will and says, oh, I can't breathe. Here it is. Indefinitely. Y'all, tell me, do you not have tears, tears of joy? so romantic and then the movie just ends with like a little montage of them spending time together and him getting used to like having to be in the celebrity spotlight y'all <laughs> i just break down every time and that song she i can't sing it because it's, i don't know the words uh or the rhythm of it so we're gonna move past it but it's such a sweet song and like he is like oh my god these celebrity lights and she's like smiling and laughing and they're just like getting along so well and then you see them sitting in the park y'all the park they're sitting in the park and she's like got her head on his lap and she's wearing these hideous clogs they're so ugly and she's laying there with a baby bump and they're together. <laughs> ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. Listen, I don't know about you. I don't know what world that you live in, but if that movie did not trigger some kind of joy, you are made of stone. And also you don't deserve good things. You know what I mean? If that movie does not make you happy in any capacity, like you don't deserve anything good. Not one good thing. Cause you mean to tell me you watch Notting Hill from start to finish. You watch the entirety of the movie and you weren't moved once, not one time. Not one time were you moved by the romance, the comedy, the heartbreak, the multiple heartbreak. This is a roller coaster. Okay, a roller coaster of what it's like. And I just think that it's beautiful. Listen, I love me some Notting Hill and that's a good one. So I hope to see you in the next one where I will talk about another, another movie. Again, the reason I'm bringing these back is because I, I want to stop trying to root everything in today and root everything in reality because we know that like reality sucks. Let us, let us get into like a nice little fantasy world where things are beautiful. We get to escape and we got to escape. I got to be Will Thacker, you know what I mean? And have like a high profile, like Hollywood romance. Listen, all right, if you like this, just, you know, thumbs up the video, please and thanks. If you didn't, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but don't come back, you know what I mean? Cause you're not gonna find anything better than this personality. So don't come back here if you don't like it. I'm just saying. All right, well, I gotta go. It's time to Twitch stream. <laughs> Bye.